we know that narcissists don't like to take accountability. We know that they won't take accountability and that they can't really make change in that because they don't have the empathy it takes to put themselves in the position of the other person and relate to others. They are relating through their ego, which says me, 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 and only me, right? And they're trying to get their way. They're trying to deflect. They're trying to point the oh, finger, whatever. When dealing with a person who argues in any of these ways, the best solution is gray rock. The best solution is to not engage in it. And if they are truly toxic, and you'd bring it up later and say, hey, that was a bad argument. We went into this dark place and, and, and they can't find a place of accountability and they can't find a place of discussion that leads to action, not just accountability of, yeah, you're right, because a lot of covert narcissists will do that. But yeah, you're right. Ooh, I need to make some changes here. And then you see action toward change. If you do not see that, you're probably dealing with someone so toxic that they can't make change. And therefore, gray rocket, get away from it, whatever you need to do to make your life healthy, but certainly don't engage with it because these argument tactics are about winning. Real relationship discussion and argument and debate is about finding commonality, hearing each other's point of view and repairing any anything that needs to be repaired within the relationship or changed within the relationship. It's about compromise. It's about coming together in an and a heightened upset state to find resolution. When you have any, any of these tactics going on, they are not about resolution. They're about winning so that they do not have to take accountability and they do not have to make change or do any of the emotional work that it takes to have a real relationship with another human being. I'm gonna talk about five ways people might use toxic behavior in arguments to stop from taking accountability, to deflect and project the blame back onto you and to get away Six with. Things. So one thing they might do in an argument is minimize your feelings, your distress, or your concern. They might say things like, why are you overreacting? What's the matter here? Why, why is, what's the problem? Why is there a problem? Why are you so sensitive? You are upset about the most petty thing. Why do you get upset about such small things? Those are the kinds of things that they might say to you when they are dismissing and minimizing the issue. Another thing they might do here is slow down. So they might come in hot, right? And then slow down and soften their speech so that by the time they've done all this minimizing and talking to you in a harsh way or talking to you in an accusatory way then they're slow and calm by then you're escalated you're yelling you're upset you're reacting whatever it is you do you're shutting down and therefore they can become the victim or they can flip the script and make you the perpetrator of this argument in this calm soft voice sometimes that comes in usually with a covert narcissist is another way of minimizing and diverting so that the topic is never talked about. Another thing they do is they blame shift. They will point the finger back at you. If you were not so whatever, I wouldn't have had to whatever, right? Well, the only reason I did that is because you did this. Well, I know you just don't like who I am as a person. These are the kinds of things they'll say to shift the blame back to you. They do something wrong, you don't like who they are as a person. And therefore you're wrong for not liking who they are as a person. And you should like who they are as a person and let them do the thing that they're doing because there's nothing wrong with what they're doing because it's just how they are, right? So that is pretty toxic in relationships. Another thing that they will do, the infamous gaslighting, trying to make you disbelieve your reality, to not see what happened as actually what happened, and then shift the realities to whatever they are saying happened, happened, right? So they say things like, I never said that. That's not how it was. What are you talking about? They will even pretend that they don't remember things in the conversation that happened three minutes earlier, right? To gaslight you that it never, it was never said. It was, it never happened. They will, they will do things like say, well, that proves nothing. Wait, no, actually it proves everything, right? But they, they use statements to sort of gaslight the situation so that you're confused. Another form of gaslighting could be where they completely change the topic and change the subject, bringing up the past or whatever, so that 
you're talking about one thing when you thought you were talking about something else and then they mix the two together, which makes it really confusing into word salad. And so we'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, gaslighting, there are whole videos on gaslighting. I have videos on gaslighting. I will do more on gaslighting because it's a big topic and it's one that you need to learn how to not engage with. Once someone is gaslighting, game off done no more conversation until they can come to their senses if they're not toxic and speak to you rationally and logically about what's going on if they're toxic they're that conversation's over Deal. yelling name calling ridiculing so that you get flustered you get reactive you get angry see here's part of the game in in an argument with a narcissist because for them it's game to get you elevated and get you escalating the your behavior to make you reactive so that they can push the blame back onto you for being reactive, make the whole argument about how reactive you are and how angry and how much you yell and how you are mad at them all the time and blah, 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 instead of the thing you were upset about in the first place, which was probably pretty small in comparison with how they're making this big situation if they would have just dealt with it, right? But they once they've got you reactive, the initial topics over and now it's all about how you are angry yelling whatever whatever it is they choose to belittle with you with or to ridicule you with dismissal and deflection kind of touched on that a little with the gaslighting but dismissal of of conversation with word salad you just start talking about things that are unrelated but slightly related and sort of related and then it doesn't really make any sense but you're saying lots of words and then they're then they're just talking about this, that, and the other while they are also telling you how bad you are, while they're telling you how wrong you are, and how could you be that way, and why do, why do you see you don't like me anyway? They throw all, the, all of it together into a giant salad, right, and throw it at you so that you're lost in the conversation. Dismissal and deflection can also be bringing up past arguments. So you're discussing something, it turns into an argument, they start gaslighting you, and then they, then they throw in a past argument. Well, now the topic's two things. And so you're toggling in your brain both things that, no, no, wait, I wanna talk about what we were talking about. I don't wanna talk about the last time this happened or the last time that happened. I wanna talk about what we were talking about to begin with. And they say, see, you always do that. Here's one thing, you always, you always do this. You always do that. Not healthy in relationships, right? They'll guilt trip you. That, that is one way that they deflect and dismiss. This is really common with narcissistic parents, especially narcissistic mothers. I do so much for you and look what I get. After everything I've done for you, this is how you're gonna treat me. This is how you're gonna talk to me. I am your whatever and you treat me like this. You know, I have loved you your whole life and this is what the thanks I get. This is what happens. So you see, they use these guilt trips to avoid whatever it is that you're upset with them about or you're trying to discuss with them that maybe you're not even upset, you're just trying to discuss, right? Anything that catches them in something they don't wanna reveal about themselves. And then and the last thing I'm gonna talk about today is projecting. Projecting to point the finger at you for the very thing that it is that they are doing. So they're trying to force you to take the blame, point the finger at you, or things they've done that you're not talking about, but you know that they do, point the finger at you. They may even say you're gaslighting me. They may even say you're projecting. <laughs> There's all kinds of things they'll do, which are kind of ridiculous, but they do them in order to avoid and taking any accountability in anything in life, in order to avoid real relationship discussion that is meaning someone needs to make change. You may both need to make change and they still won't take accountability for their part. So if you need coaching, group coaching, or peer support, check out the information in the description of every video. Again, my name is Lise Colucci and hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.